Hey y'all. Dropping balls at random into bins is an abstraction that shows up a lot in the analysis of randomized algorithms. In this video, we'll do a quick introduction to balls and bins with a few examples. So here's the basic setup. We have m bins, and we're going to toss n balls into these bins uniformly at random. So for example, maybe the first ball is going to land here, the second one lands here, third one's over here, fourth one lands in the same bin that the second one did, and so on. We might want to ask questions like, how many empty bins are there? Or what's the fullest bin? Or how many balls do we have to throw before we hit all of the bins? This last one is actually the coupon collector's problem from a previous video. This stylized balls and bins setting captures a lot of situations that come up in the analysis of randomized algorithms. One example that you may have seen is the so-called birthday paradox. Have you ever noticed that when you have not that many people in a room, it seems uncannily likely that two people share a birthday? It turns out that this is actually pretty likely whenever there are at least 23 people or so. We can analyze this as an example of a balls and bins problem. Each day of the year is a bin, so maybe this bin is October 10th, and each person is a ball, and we're dropping people into bins, people into birthdays, uniformly at random. And then we're asking, what is the probability that any bin has at least two people in it? To analyze this, let's compute the probability that no two balls ever collide. So let's imagine dropping balls in one at a time. The probability that the first ball doesn't collide with anything is 1, since there's nothing to collide with. The probability that the second ball doesn't collide with the first is m minus 1 divided by m, since there are m minus 1 open bins that the first didn't occupy out of m possible total. Assuming that the first two balls don't collide, the probability that a third doesn't collide with either of the first two is m minus 2 divided by m, because there are m minus 2 open bins out of m total, and so on. Note that we're assuming here that n is less than or equal to m, since if m is bigger than n, then of course two balls are going to collide by the pigeonhole principle. So then, altogether, the probability that two balls collide is equal to m minus 1 times m minus 2 times dot 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 all the way up to m minus n plus 1 divided by m to the n minus 1. If you work this out for our example of birthdays, if m is 365 and n is 23, uh, then this thing is about 0 0.4927. So that means that if you have 23 people with probability about half, two of those people will share a birthday. Okay, so the birthday paradox wasn't so much of a paradox as we just hadn't done the math yet, uh, but at least it was a nice warm-up. Let's move on to the problem of maximum load. So the problem is the following. Suppose we drop n balls into n bins. What is the maximum number of balls that end up in any one bin? For example, in this picture down here, I've tossed 12 balls into 12 bins, and the maximum load is 3, attained by that bin. We're going to start by proving this proposition, which says that the maximum load is at most c log n divided by log log n for some constant c and for sufficiently large n. Later, we'll see that this bound is basically tight. So the proof idea is as follows. In the first step, we're going to show that for any k that's big enough, bigger than 3 log n divided by log log n, uh, this here is a comma and not a prime, sorry about that, the probability that any fixed bin, let's say without loss of generality bin 1, has load exactly k is teeny tiny, like little o of 1 over n squared. We'll prove this for bin 1, but it will hold for any fixed bin. In step 2, we're going to do a giant union bound. We're going to union bound over all n bins, and also all values of k that are relevant. Uh, that is, k's bigger than 3 log n over log log n, but smaller than n. There are fewer than n such k's. Altogether, that's fewer than n squared things we need to union bound over. Once we do this union bound, we'll conclude that the probability that any bin has load bigger than 3 log n divided by log log n is going to be okay, n squared times this little o of 1 over n squared, also known as little o of 1. And this will prove the proposition up here that we wanted to show. Okay, so let's start with step 1. We want to show that for any k bigger than 3 log n over log log n, the probability that bin 1 has load exactly k is teeny tiny, little o of 1 over n squared. So we can start out by computing the probability that bin 1 has load exactly k. 
well, this is just n choose k for all of the possible sets of k balls that could land in bin 1 times the probability that exactly that set lands in bin 1, which is 1 over n to the k times 1 minus 1 over n to the n minus k. We can further bound this as less than or equal to n to the k divided by k factorial, this is just a bound on the binomial coefficient here, times 1 over n to the k. And here I'm just dropping this. If I drop it, it's only going to make things bigger. So the n to the k's cancel, and this is just equal to 1 divided by k factorial. Now we can continue to bound this. So 1 over k factorial, by Sterling's approximation, is at most e divided by k to the k, which, using the fact that k is greater than 3 log n over log log n, is at most e times log log n divided by 3 log n, all raised to the 3 log n over log log n. Since 3 is bigger than e, this is only going to get bigger if I drop this e and this 3 here, so let's just go ahead and do that. So now we're left with this big nasty expression. In order to understand what this is, let us write this as e to the something. So I'm going to write this as x of, x of here just means e to the, so x of, okay, so the log of the base, that's log of log log n divided by log n times the exponent, 3 log n divided by log log n, which using rules of logarithm is x of 3 log n divided by log log n times log 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 n minus log log n. This is a good time to insert a joke. What does the drowning theoretical computer scientist say? Log 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 log. Anyway, moving right along, simplifying this further, this is equal to n to the minus 3 plus some nasty term, which I think is going to be 3 log 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 n divided by log log n. And the point is that this term here, this log 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 n divided by log log n, is little o of 1. So altogether, the behavior of this is very similar to 1 over n cubed, and in particular this whole thing is little o of 1 over n squared, which is what we wanted to show. So now we've completed step 1. So going back to this outline, we've now completed step 1, and it's time for step 2. Step 2 doesn't actually need any extra proving, the proof is all right here. We're just going to take a union bound over n squared things, and we'll conclude that the probability that any bin has load bigger than 3 log n divided by log log n is teeny tiny little o of 1. So now we're done with that too. Hooray! So, to recap. 1. Balls and bins come up a lot. 2. Two people in this class are very likely to have the same birthday. And 3. The maximum load after dropping n balls into n bins is big O of log n divided by log log n with high probability. In the next video, we'll discuss the Poisson distribution, and we'll discuss a technique called Poissonization, which shows that this bound of log n divided by log log n is in fact tight. See you there!